Well, since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Well, it's standing there in the lonely street, heartbreak and terror. Well, I've been so lonely, I've been so lonely, I've been so lonely. Although it's always crowded, you still can find some room for broken hearted lovers to cry away with gloom. Oh, it's so lonely, oh, it's so lonely, we'll be so lonely, they could die. The bellhop's tears keep flowing, the desk clerk's dressed in black. Well, they've been so long and lonely the streets, they'll never, never back a bit. So, we'll be so lonely, baby. Well, they're so lonely. We'll be so lonely, they could die. Now, if your baby leaves you, you have a tale to tell. But just take a walk down lonely street to Heartbreak Hotel. Well, there's a girl here so lonely, baby. You'll be so lonely. You'll be so lonely. You could die. sit foot in another hotel lounge until the day I die, it'll be too soon. Just once, maybe you could book me into a room that's got some people in it or something. For my birthday, if I'm good. No sooner said than done. Pack your bags and say goodbye to Dubuque, kid. You're headed for Vegas. Vegas? As in Las Vegas? Your license came through and I booked you into a small hotel on the Strip. They went crazy for your tape. The manager says you look enough like Elvis to be his twin brother. <laughs> I hope not. His brother was born dead. Vegas just isn't my scene, Sandra. It's not Caesar's Palace, but it's a start. It's a big break for you. A big break? Oh, come on, Sandra. Vegas killed Elvis. We're talking Sodom in the desert here. It's showgirls, slots, and sleaze. Those kind of shows are fine for Wayne Newton, but I play rock and roll. You do Elvis imitations, Gary. They loved Elvis in Vegas. Yeah, they did. They loved him to death, didn't they? I look like Elvis. I cannot help that. But that don't mean I have to make the same mistakes he did. The man was the king of rock and roll. And what happened to him? He, he wound up prancing around in a white suit and handing out scarves to a bunch of middle-aged housewives. Elvis gave me a scarf once. Elvis and you? Uh, you never told me that. I was 18. He picked me out of a crowd, took me up to his hotel room and talked to me for hours. He kept saying he wasn't the king, that somebody was after him. Crazy stuff. It was pretty weird near the end there. Paranoid. You know, I'll bet this took place in Vegas, right? Yes, but that has nothing to do with it. Oh, that has everything to do with it. Sandra, 10 minutes after I hit that strip, they are going to be fitting me for a white suit and asking me to sing my way. No, not me, baby. It has got to be rock and roll music if you want to dance with me. I sweated blood to get you this chance, Gary. You walk out on it and you can keep walking. I don't need this. And I do. The music, Sandra. It was great music. Maybe so, but it's not your music, Gary. Face it, you're not a musician. You're a nostalgia act. Exit one Gary Pitkin, singer, impersonator, and restless subject of a dead king named Elvis Aaron Presley, a frustrated young man born 25 years too late, who is about to find his own place to dwell down at the end of Lonely Street in a neighborhood called the Twilight Zone. <laughs>
stopping. I was just in a... Elvis? You look just like Elvis Presley. Do I know you, mister? You all right? You look all shook up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was in an accident. Well, you want a ride or don't you? I gotta get back to Memphis. Memphis? I just... Well, I guess Memphis is as good a place as any. when you go in to cut that record for Sam Phillips at Sun. How did you know about that? Oh, I know all kinds of things. I could help you, Ellis. About time you got back, Presley. Where you been, boy? Uh, I'll rent that stuff out the side, too, just like you said, Mr. Harris. Uh, and then I'll come straight back. Presley, we've told you we don't allow our driver to pick up no hitchhikers. You got a picture of a nigger on your undershirt? This time we'll let it pass, being his family and all. But no more riders. I don't care if it is your brother. Yes, sir. But he ain't my brother. I ain't got no brother. Who are you, mister? Where do you come from? I, I don't know. I, I think I must have died or something. Well, you, you best be going. I got some work to do. I don't want nothing to do with you. Well, you can turn your back on me, Elvis. But you can't turn your back on your destiny. Well, now you're talking crazy. I don't have to listen to this just because you look a little like me. A little? I look just like you. I look exactly like you, don't I? Uh, there's only one person who could look just like me. You never said your name. Jesse. I don't care what you call me, Elvis. But I am your brother. You can believe that. I'm the best brother you're ever gonna have. No, no, no. Jesse died. He died when I was born. My mama told me. She used to go to his grave and talk to him. Elvis, you believe in miracles? Flying saucers? Ghosts? You believe in that stuff? Come back. To help you. 
You are going to be bigger than you can imagine. A king! There are going to be tours and, and gold records and the Ed Sullivan Show. The yeah, Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah, but... but... Listen to me, Elvis. It ain't going to all be good. There are going to be some people who, who just want to use you. There'll be drugs and scandals and liars and cheats. But it doesn't have to happen that way. You got to come home with me, Jesse. Uh, see Mama. Talk to her. And Daddy, they'd be just crazy to see you, Jesse. Uh, I, I can't. Elvis, they wouldn't understand. And you can't tell them why. Why can't I tell Mama? She'd be so happy. Because I, I, I didn't come back for Mama. I came back on account of you. On account of your music. Maybe I should just go. I, I thought that... I don't want to hurt anybody. You can't just go and leave me, Jesse. Not again. I, I need you. You don't understand, Elvis. Don't go, Jesse. Tomorrow's the 4th. This place is closed on account of the holiday. I got a key. Meet me here. You could help me practice the song I'm going to sing for Mr. Phillips. Sing with you? Yeah. I'd like that. You and me together, Jesse. That's how it was meant to be. As big as Dean Martin? You could say that, yeah. I always dreamed uh, someday of being like Dean Martin, you know? Making all that money. It's plenty of money. You are gonna make more money than you can possibly spend. And your music, Elvis. Your music is gonna change everything. You know, I like to make enough to get Mama a few nice things. I, we, we never had much. I like to take care of her. Maybe give myself a car, too, a, a brand new one. <laughs> you are gonna hand out cars like other people hand out sticks of gum. You're gonna be the king of rock and roll. Rock and what? Never mind, never mind. I wanna hear you play. I No, 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 no. Just forget that stuff. I mean, that's not gonna do it for you. Trust me. I mean, that stuff's just gonna sit there like an old dog on a hot summer day. No, you gotta, you gotta grab him. Make him sit up and move. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Jesse, just, just cut that out. Now, stop it. What's wrong? Uh, I can't sing that song. That's rock and roll. You know, that's all right, Mama. The big boy crud up tune. You cut it tomorrow. That's your first big hit, Elvis. Uh, it sounds trashy to me. Uh, what my mama thinks, she's even up there dancing like that. Uh, it don't hardly seem decent, Jesse. It's not supposed to be decent. I mean, it's rock and roll, you dumb son of a bitch. Nobody talks about my mama like that. You can say anything you like about me, but nobody calls my mama that name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, Elvis, I didn't call your mama a name. I called you a name. I heard what you said. Trash about my mama. That's all I've been hearing from you is trash and lies. Stop it, Elvis. You don't know what you're saying. You need me to keep you from... Why? Why do I need you? I don't need you. I'm gonna be a big singing star. You said so yourself. I don't need you or your, your trashy music. You said you were my brother. 
But that was just a lie. You ain't my brother and you ain't no friend of mine. No, Elvis. You listen to me. You gotta listen to me. You have got to go in there tomorrow prepared, ready. If you can't sit down there in front of those boys and show them that you can do that's all right, Mama, there won't be any fame or money or new cars. There may not even be any rock and roll. But we are talking about music that is going to affect millions of people, Elvis. We can't let them down. You, you can't let them down. And now I know who you are. You're, you're a devil, ain't you? You said you were dead, and you just come back to tempt me. All I got to do is listen to you, and I'll be a big success. I'll have all the girls and the money and the new cars, but I got to listen to you. I got to play the music the way you want me to, ain't that right? Some kind of devil's music, ain't it? It's not devil's music. Elvis, rock and roll is freedom. It's joy. It's being young. Stay away from me, you. You just stay away from me. It's your music. Why can't you hear it? I'm leaving. If you walk out that door, you are going to throw it all away. You will be nothing. Nothing. A nobody. A damn truck driver like you are now. That... Stop it, Elvis. I'd make it up to you if I knew how. everything just the way you did. I'll make your mama proud. I'll get her a car. A big one. Caddy. Just like you wanted. You. They're already in the studio. Uh, yeah, good. 
nervous? Yes, ma'am, uh, a little. Are we back to ma'am? Last week it was Miss Cosker. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Cosker, I remember now. <laughs> I guess I am a little nervous. Well, there he is. All right, kid, this is your session. Are you still there? So I told him I played if he didn't mind that. You're kidding me. No. <laughs> he said if he could find the key, I could play. <laughs> Have you boys ever heard this? Well, that's all right to mama. That's all right with you. Hey, that's crud up, man. That's all right to mama. Crud. Just any way you do. That's all right. That's all right. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Phillips. We, we, we were just having some fun. Well, I don't know what it is you were doing either, but uh, whatever it is, you keep doing it. Well, that's all right, Mama. That's all right for you. That's all right to Mama. Just any way you do. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right now, Mama, any way you do. Well, Mama, she done told me, Papa done told me too, my son, that guy you're fooling with, she ain't no good for you. That's all right, that's all right. Moment, you. I think I was good, but I wasn't that good. No, she knew her boy was dead. Maybe that's part of what killed her. After she was gone, it was a lot easier. The rest of them believed it all. Maybe they wanted to believe. Maybe, maybe they needed to believe. Sometimes I wake up, I have believe it myself. I've been him longer than I was me. Sometimes I wonder if it would have come out different if I hadn't stolen his life. What if he'd lived to do it his way? Maybe he would have been a better king than me. Maybe there wouldn't have been no king at all. I get headaches just thinking about it. I get these terrible dreams. He won't leave me alone. I talk to him all the time. But he says I still owe him. No, it won't be much longer now. It's been a long show. But now, the end is near. At least I, ha I had the music. Nobody could ever take that away from me. I tried to do it all the way I remember. The way he would have liked it. Make it up to him. I did the movies. He would like that. And he would like Vegas, too. The ballads. Well, it's never enough, is it? It's never enough. I have to live it all. You're just tired, Elvis. Don't worry, no one will ever take your place. You're the king. You're the only king. Yeah, sometimes I, I think so, too. Is there anything I can do for you? You look so sad. No, baby, you just, just be yourself. That's all I could ever ask from you. You got to be you. <clears throat> look, I, I got to get ready now, baby. I bet I got something for you. For me? I'll never forget this. I gotta go tell my girlfriends they'll just die. 
I love you, Elvis. A round of hollow applause for Gary Pitkin, who tried to pay a blood debt in sequins and B-movies, and discovered to his sorrow that sometimes you're called back for one encore too many in the Twilight Zone. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Does your memory stray to a to someday when I kissed you? And called you sweetheart. Keep slipping off my paw. <laughs> Margaret, walk me to my car. Sure. It's hard sometimes, isn't it, hon? I used to be able to, to picture it, holding hands with someone, sitting close to him in a movie, even make... I can't picture it anymore. Can't even hold the image in my mind longer than a second or two. Give it time. I don't know what else to say. Nothing to say, really. Give you a lift to the bus stop. No, no thanks. I'm just gonna walk for a while. See you tomorrow. It's after 10. Where you been? I went for a walk on the beach, Mom. How many times I have to tell you? It's not respectable. A young girl walking on the beach all alone by herself. I'm not that young, Mom. I know. Girl your age should be married. It's not respectable. Living at home, girl your age. We can't all be as respectable as you, Mom. special beach edition of I Love L.A. Summer's here. Where to go, what to do, we've got the answers. So suit up, wet down, and stay tuned as I Love L.A. goes to the beach.
It spoke to me. What did it say? It spoke to me. <laughs> I told you I'm fine. You can't keep me here if I don't want to stay. The doctors say it didn't hurt me, and I've been telling you that all day. Now, the doctors say so, too, so there's no reason to keep me here. Why don't you just let me go home? Listen to me. You're upset. You have every right to be. It's all right to be upset. You've been through a very traumatic experience. You don't know what I've been through. You just don't know. You all think it's some new weapon or some alien technology, but it wasn't. It wasn't any of those things. You're right. I don't know. So how about you tell me? How do you know the message was meant for you? The message was for me. The saucer searched for just the right person to tell, and it chose me. How? Explain it to me. I don't have to explain anything to you. I haven't broken any laws. You can't keep me here if I don't want to stay. I'm not sick. I'm not hurt. I didn't even have to tell you my name if I didn't want to. Here she comes. Get out now. Here she is. The flying saucer. What did it say? I'm going to need Did it really speak to you? Uh, what did it, what did it feel like? There's no invasion. It was a private message. Will you communicate often with these aliens? We'll give you $10,000 tax right now. Do call it. Speculation continues to mount regarding the mysterious spacecraft, or saucer, as it's being popularly called, confiscated in Los Angeles three days ago. When cut open for lab tests, the vessel was revealed to be empty. No mechanisms whatever to account for its flight. Theories range from some sort of plasma propulsion, which, once exhausted, simply evaporated, to speculation the entire incident was merely a hoax though that fails to account for the mysterious alloy of the saucer's hull. Engineers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena think there might be another answer, and we'll have that for you when the Channel 6 News continues in just a moment. You know what they're saying? They're saying you're a traitor, a spy, because you won't tell. The neighbors, they look at me funny now. They think we've got little green men hiding in the bathroom. They're scared of us. It was a private message. There's nothing for anyone to be afraid of. It's bad enough no man's ever going to take you off my hands. you got to get yourself in the papers, on the TV. you got to shame your mother like this. What you really mean is it's not respectable. You get out. You take your things and get the hell out of here. I'll put my mean name back on the mailbox so nobody will know we're related. Get out! Please. Single? That'll be fine. I'll need a forty dollar deposit. Sign here. Hey. Aren't you the woman who I No, I'm not. I'm not anybody.
Yeah. Can I get you anything else? No, no, thank you. It was delicious, though. Um, would you be interested in having dinner with, with me tonight? I'd like that. Great. Seven o'clock, okay? That'll be fine. Uh, Margaret, where do you live? See you at seven. Thank you. I used to dream about doing this, holding a wine glass in both hands and peeping over the rim at some <laughs> man. <laughs> I guess it sounds kind of silly. No, no, not to me, it doesn't. I guess you've been through a lot lately, haven't you? I mean, with the newspapers, the TV. Yeah, they just won't leave me alone. I know. They all want to know what it said. But you know, even before all this, I used to notice you when I came into the cafe. You did? So, what did it say, anyway? It was private. Oh, come on, you can tell me. Please don't ask me that again. Margaret, I'm not asking you to take it to the papers. I'm just saying that it might do you some good, you know, just to tell one person so we can get it off your chest. Excuse me. Uh, I'm not feeling very well. Margaret, Margaret, wait, Margaret. Hold on, Margaret. Now, look, look, what's the harm? Damn you! Damn you all! certain living souls a loneliness unspeakable so great it must be shared as company is shared by lesser beings such a loneliness is mine and 
know by this that in immensity there's one lonelier than you, and it's addressed to the loneliest one. How did you know? That's what you put in the bottles, isn't it? It was the only thing in my life I could call my own. The only thing I could give to anybody. I just couldn't take it anymore. No, I threw a ball into the sea. And out with it, with a part of my own loneliness. I found it, and it made a difference. It really did. When I read it, I knew somehow this was connected to the saucer. And, and, and when I read the words, it was like a song. I'm not explaining this right. I don't. No, no, it's fine. You know, people thought the saucer was a ship or a weapon, but it wasn't. It was a bottle with a message inside. Only it had a much bigger ocean to cross, all of space. And without much chance of anybody finding it. But still, someone sent it out. Something I don't understand. Me, I know I'm not the most uh, good-looking guy in the world. But you, it, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Those words were my words. And what I wrote. But that's not what the saucer said. Exactly. This is. Give me your hand. species, or a traveler marooned on alien shores. Perhaps in the end, all that matters is this, that even to loneliness, there is an end. And for those who are lonely enough, long enough, a message cast adrift on the darkest beaches of the Twilight Zone. Thank you.